So sometimes when I'm starting a new animal I like to work out a real basic sort of model first using polymer clay, wire or scraps of um, fabric and things just to work out the right sort of sizing. So we're going to start off making the frame of the bat um, and for that I'm using paper covered wire so this is a very fine wire and it's covered in paper and it's um, you can get it at craft stores or florists uh, things like that. So you want to take your strips of wire and um, starting in the middle sort of just wrap them around and twist together. So now you get another length of the thin paper wire and we're going to wrap it around so that this end here creates the little bat's thumb that sticks up and then wrap it around just once or twice and then the other length will make the other little bat's um, finger in the wing like that. Okay. And then I'm going to cut that to length just there. And cut the other little fingers on the wing to length, like so. So once you're happy with the frame of your bat wings, um, you can move on to the body. So for that I'm going to use the same paper wire but to make it a bit more uh, stronger I'm going to just fold it and twist it so it's doubled up and then just pinch the end together with some pliers. So I'm going to measure that against the wire length on my body. So once you're happy with the body wire section, we can move on for the legs. So again, we're just going to twist two more pieces lengths of the paper wire together. We keep twisting and each length here is going to make a toe. So we'll have two toes there and we just cut them to length. Just keep twisting the other end to make two toes on the other leg, doesn't have to be exact, and then just cut those. And then you can take another piece of the paper wire and just wrap once or twice around like so, the ankle area, and that will create the other two toes. So I'm just giving my back um, four toes on his feet. So you want to connect the wings sort of just above halfway down and we're just going to use an extra piece of paper wire and just wrap that round tightly. Don't worry about what that looks like because we're going to cover it with wool anyway. So as tight as you can. Okay, so then we're going to attach the legs and we're just going to put it in position and bend this bottom piece of wire up and pinch together as tightly as you can. Like so. And that should keep the legs in place. If you want to you can also add another piece of paper wire just around the join just for extra hold. So once you've all connected your um, little bat skeleton together uh, you can check again on the stencil here. So my little feet and legs are a tiny bit longer uh, surprising how small some um, little bats can be but it really doesn't matter um, if they're a bit longer or a bit smaller, however you want to do it. It's just sort of as a guide. So I'm happy with that. So now we can start building up the body. So to wrap the frame of the wings, I'm just cutting some... This was just a lining from an old cushion that I've dyed using acrylic paints. Um, I'm just cutting very thin strips, but you could use any fabric for this or 
um, brown ribbon or you could use wool fibre and I'm just going to use, this is just tacky glue so um, I'm just going to take my paintbrush and just apply that quite liberally onto the wire and then I'm going to wrap my fabric around So you want to keep wrapping all of the uh, fingers of the wing. A bit more glue and then wrap the ends around. So I'm not going to wrap any fabric around the little thumb, it's just too tiny. Uh, we're going to use another way of covering that in a minute. So I'm just going to keep wrapping these sections. And then just let that dry. You don't have to make the wire part of the wing. You can just cut out the fabric from felt and then once you've made the legs and the body later, once you've needle felted the body, you can sew the fabric wings on or glue them on um, or needle felt them on and you can use something like this leather cord to make the the uh, little fingers in the wings and you could just glue that on so that's just another option right so what I'm doing now is just taking a little bit of uh, this Mod Podge or you can use PVA glue and just coat the toes with a little bit, just using a cocktail stick. Then once that dries, you'll be able to paint the feet. Thumb as well. So once the glue or Mod Podge is dry on your little feet, you can just take a marker, I'm using a dark brown, and you can just colour them in. And the little thumb. So for the wings of the bat, you can use a variety of material. Um, so this was quite nice, I thought it was a, an old dishcloth, it's quite um, transparent and it's got a nice texture and or this was just an old lining from a cushion and again that would be quite nice or you could just use wool felt this sort of thing so I just mixed um, sort of two parts paint um, so I just mixed sort of one part paint to three parts water diluted it down dunked it in and sort of um, let it all absorb and then let it dry so now I'm just drawing around the stencil for my bat wing. I honestly couldn't decide um, which bat wing material I liked most. So that was the dishcloth that I just dyed using some acrylic paints. But this was the interfacing which has a nice sort of translucent uh, look to it. So I think I'm going to go with this one. Also the great thing about this lining or interfacing um, is that it doesn't fray around the edges. So now we're going to build up the body of our bat and for that I'm just going to use some core wool and starting around the tummy just going to use little strips and wrap as tightly as I can. And then just up over the shoulders and then around, this is the nose area. So 
So keeping the nose forwards and then I'm going to wrap another strip of core wool to build up the head. We can shape it a bit more in a bit, so you want to use your fingers to help shape the head. So I've just zoomed in a little bit, um, just so you can see a bit more clearly what I'm doing. Um, so the nose, I'm going to build up a tiny, tiny bit more, going around the bridge. So it is quite fiddly, this bit. So they have quite high foreheads there and a little nose and if you look from the bird's eye view um, it tapers out to a little point. I build up the body a tiny bit more just around the middle section. Right so we're going to start adding a little bit of colour now. Um, I'm going to use basically just two browns. So I've got a dark brown and a sort of lighter brown. I do a darker brown nose area. Again, you hardly need any wool because you don't want to build up the nose so it's too big. This is just to add some colour. And then a bit of dark brown just around the legs. Look how cute these little feet are, so cute. Then we're going to needle felt little bits of the lighter brow. I quite like him quite fluffy so I'm not going to, on the body, so I'm not going to needle felt the body too much. Turn him over and needle felt the back. So I'm turning him up as well to needle felt under the chin and that also gives you a good view to make sure you get the nose um, sort of even. And then I'm going to needle felt bit more wool just around the sides. And round onto the back. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of the dark brown wool just around the top section of the arms. And then maybe one or two stabs to keep it in place. And tuck that end in. Okay. So I decided to add a tiny, tiny bit of really a light brown um, just onto his belly. Just to give a little bit of contrast from the back. So that's just a tiny bit of light brown, so I've used dark brown, medium brown and light brown just on his tummy area. So we've got the nice little round head, little nose pointing upwards and the little body, um, he's a little podgy but I quite like him like that and then tapering down thinner towards the legs. So at this stage I'll sort of look and see if he needs any more little bits of wool like this little area here. I'm just going to cover that with a tiny bit more of the medium brown. And then like this little bit here, uh, just to make it even, I'll cover that with a tiny bit more brown. Like so. So for the ears I've actually chosen to use a bit of uh, wool felt that I've just dyed with some acrylic paints and it's dried and I just draw around the little ear 
stencil that I cut out and then you can just cut that out. So this is the part I love now because when you start attaching the ears and the eyes um, and everything these little creatures really start getting their character. Um, so we're going to start with the mouth. So I'm just taking some of my black carded wool and just rolling it, teasing it out into a thin strip and then you can needle felt that onto the mouth. So I usually start in the centre on these little bats. Needle felt that round. Well it's more like a sort of upside down V I suppose. And then you can take two tiny, tiny little bits of black and just needle felt those in with the nostrils. Or if you prefer, you can embroider these in with a couple of stitches. And again, if you find that you're losing some of the detail on your bat's nose or if you felted it in, you can always just carefully insert a sewing needle and just pull it forward slightly. So for the eyes I'm just using these little stem back eyes, um, little black eyes on these stems and these are two millimetre and I'm going to make a little eye socket first just by pushing my needle all the way through carefully, twisting and then you can just put a tiny bit of glue onto the back of your eye, like so. And then, oops, um, these can be a bit fiddly to get in, but if you just push it like that and then use the tip of your finger to twist and push, then it should go in quite easily. Then I'm just going to use my dark brown marker just to go around the eyes a little bit, just to create a little bit of a pattern. And the nose a bit more. So we want the little um, denty bit pointing outside, on the outside. And you can just even needle felt these on or sew them on. I'm just going to needle felt them on for now. I'm able to position the base of each ear with the base of the eye, like so. And just needle felt those on. So I'm just lining up the inside edge of the ear with the inside of the eye when I'm attaching. Um, so looking at your back from the front view, just attaching the other ear and then looking at him from the front view again. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the brown, so really hardly any, uh, just in between the ears and needle felt that on. So I decided to add just a tiny bit of the light brown wool around the armpit area. I just attach that and then just wrap it around just to build up his little armpit area onto the arm. So before I attach the wings now, I'm just going to lay my back back on the paper wing stencil and make sure I've lined up the fingers of the wings into the points um, on the paper stencil. So the point of the, um, the bottom point goes in between the middle of the two legs and the little ankles are going to attach to the edge of the wing template there, like that, little ankles on the feet are going to attach there. 
so we're all lined up if you've got any that are sticking over a little bit don't worry because once it's all glued in place you can trim them off in a minute so now it's just deciding on the wing so I thought I'd show you guys this was the wing I was telling you about if you don't want to make the wire wings if you just want to make the body of your bat and the little feet and then you could just make the wings out this is just felt wool felt so I've cut that from the stencil and I've put some leather cord on there just glued that on and look how cute that would look so you could just have your little bat with um, his little feet so you, you would just glue that on so it's just another option so I still can't really decide whether I like the dishcloth wings for a sort of rag raggedy look or the interfacing that I've dyed. I'm probably going to go with the interfacing um, but what do you guys think? I don't know. Uh, that one or, or this one. Uh, I'm going to go with the interfacing wings for now because that was my first thought. So once we've lined up the feet where we want them, the arms, um, we're going to turn our back back over and keeping this in place, using a fine felting needle, um, taking some of our medium brown wool, we're just going to needle felt that to attach the back of the wing, so straight through. So you may want to spend a bit more time doing this just so it's really well attached. You could add a couple of stitches first if you want to, um, like so. I'm just, just building up a bit of the time, making sure it's held in place. Right, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to turn my little bat back over. And now I'm just going to glue these little fingers into place. So to do that, I'm going to take some more of the tacky glue and just using a cocktail stick I'm going to carefully apply to the underside of the wings trying not to get it so you don't need much at all I uh, don't want it to sort of splodge out all onto my wings so I'm going to just cover the underside first good thing about this glue is that it dries clear so don't worry if you get some out onto the wing because it won't really notice. Little fingers are in place and that one goes up there like so. There you go so just wipe that away, a bit of tissue or something and hold in place and then like I say don't worry about these little bits they they'll dry clear and you're not gonna you're not gonna notice those so there's our cute little bat he's all finished um, and he can wrap his wings around himself like this so thanks so much again for watching guys and um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you back here at the wishing shed for future craft tutorials Bye.